Okay, this is uh, how we do a mail merge. Uh, to make my life easier, I have my documents that I need in one folder, and because Office always likes to open in the documents folder, I'm going to make an alias. This is totally uh, a step of convenience, and if your files are all over the place, this may not help you, but I'm going to do this to make it a little easier for me later when I open documents. This is an alias to a, a Google uh, a folder in my Google Drive. Okay. I'm going to start uh, by going uh, to my folder, and I have a letterhead template that I'm going to use, so I'm going to double click that and that opens up into a fresh document. Uh, my letter template has uh, my sidebar and banner already and some basic text. I'm next going to go to a Google Doc where I have the text for my letter. And it's already selected, so I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to go back here and I'm going to uh, paste and I'm going to do a paste and match formatting so that I don't change the formatting of my template and if I have to adjust the size of this to accommodate I can do all that. I'm going to hit escape to make that go away and here is my letter. Next to make the mail merge I'm going to go to mailings and I'm going to start a mail merge. I'm going to go to letters and that starts me uh, in this process. The next thing I'm going to do, it's going to prompt me, I'm going to select recipients. I'm going to use an existing list and here is where my little mail merge alias just makes my life a little bit easier and I'm going to go over here to my Excel database uh, where I have all my names and addresses. So I'm going to select that file. Uh, Word is asking for permission. I'm going to say yes. I'm confirming that the workbook, or the worksheet, is mailing list. Uh, after I've done that, I have my mail merge fields available to me. Uh, my spreadsheet has uh, two possible first names and it also has a formula to uh, concatenate those names so I'm going to use this field called first names and you may have some sort of custom field as well. I'm going to go right over here dear and right before the colon and I'm going to insert for first names and that's all the customization in this letter. Uh, later we'll use the address on some labels. Uh, I can preview my results and now you see it says Dear Jack and Sarah. If I switch ahead, Allison and Terrence and so forth. And if there's only one name, it has only one name. If I'm happy with the formatting and I'm ready to go, I can go over to Finish and Merge and I can print documents. Here I can use my printer or I can actually generate a PDF and print it later. Uh, so I can generate PDFs of this merge and print it later when I'm in the office or when I have the right paper or the right printer so forth. Uh, if I'm ready to go, if I've loaded my paper in, I can say print and I'm good to go. I can save this document and it'll remember the mail merge. Uh, so I can refer to it later. I'm going to discard it for now. The next thing we'll want to do is make uh, some labels. So I'm going to go to, I'm still in Word, and I'm going to go to New Document. And I'm going to go to my Mailings. And I'm going to start Mail Merge, and I'm going to say Labels. Here, uh, I can pick Avery US letter because that's the form that the labels come on. It's the size paper. And I can pick uh, uh, which number. If some of the newer label numbers are not in here, what you can do is search for 
a label uh, that is your same size. So if I'm using 1 inch by 2 and 5 eighths, I can see that that is a number 18160. And that's only if my uh, some of the newer Avery labels might not be in Word already. So that's 18160. If I'm in this field here, I can type 18160, and it takes me right to it. I can confirm that that is the label size I want, and I'm going to say OK. The next thing I'm going to do is select recipients again, and here's where we select our mailing list. I'm going to use an existing list, which again is my same spreadsheet. I'm going to use my alias that I created since it Word or Office always takes me to the Documents folder, Mail Merge Alias, and in here I'm going to select my Excel database. I'm going to give it permission to do this. The worksheet is Mail List. I'm going to say OK. Now, just like before, I have my Mail Merge sheets. Here, again, I have a formula that concatenates uh, appropriately the first and last names uh, of the person or the person and their partner and it takes into account different last names if they are different. So I have a full names field here that I will use and that'll take care of uh, addressing my names. Next I'm going to add my street 1. I'm going to add street 2 in case there's an apartment number. I'm going to add city. I'm going to type comma space I'm going to add state. Oops. I'm going to add state space and I'm going to add zip. Uh, here Word prompts us with this next next record statement, but I need to update labels. This is a key function for labels. If I update, then it automatically populates all the labels with the same merge fields. Then I'm going to preview results, just like we did before on the letter, and you'll see now I have all my names. Uh, and I've got a variety. I might have an apartment on some, I might not. And we'll look to see if there's another page. I go to the end and there's one label on the other page because I have 40 names in my list and there's 39 labels on a page. Um, when I've loaded this document into my printer or these labels I can do just like before I can say print I select my printer or I can print a PDF and do it later. Uh, make any settings about my um, printer uh, if I need to pick which tray has the labels in it uh, and so forth. And then I can print here just like before I can save this document so I can go back and print it again if I need to. If I'm going to do a couple mailings with this list uh, I'll need to make this merge once and here I have. Um, uh, one other thing you can do with mail merges, and you can do this with the letters and the labels, is you can filter your recipients. So if I had a spreadsheet that had some uh, other designations like marking who was a frequent donor or an infrequent donor, I could filter based on that criteria and pull a list of frequent donors or infrequent donors. So. Uh, and that's just one example. But any other data I have in my spreadsheet, I can use to filter and make a specialized list here.